Welcome, Mr. Amar Patel. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for agreeing to talk with me. You are the vice presidential candidate of the American Solidarity Party. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And I found you because the American Solidarity Party identifies as a Christian Democratic Party. And I work for the Christian Demo Democratic Party of Sweden. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I know I only have a few minutes with you, but I really wanted to ask you, in America, with the electoral system that you have, it's kind of difficult to even get a chance if you're not one of the big parties. Why is it important as a third party alternative still to run for office? Yeah, you know, a lot of times people will ask us why there isn't a Christian Democratic Party in the United States when they flourish in other parts of the world. And it's precisely for that reason. Our electoral system has, uh, you know, the the voting system has first passed the post, you know, like the, pl the plurality victory winner take all system, you know, kind of makes it makes us subject to a two party system. And so uh, that's why we can't really break through uh, what well, we haven't broken through in the past. But there's also there's factors of education. Uh, there are, you know, when I talk to coworkers, even so, I'm a teacher uh, by trade. I'm a high school teacher, and when I talk to coworkers, when they ask me, you know, uh, you know, how'd you get involved in this, and what do you guys like? What are your stances, or whatever? And I'll, I'll start with, well, you know, like around the world, they have <clears throat> this concept of Christian democracy that's been around for like a hundred years plus, mm -hmm. uh, and has flourished in European and South American countries, and like even I think Australia might have uh, a party that they're trying to start. But, you know, we can't make headway because of the two party system. And they'll say, well, what's that? You know, and like they don't even know that like that's Germany's like ruling party for for several Forever. <laughs> Forever, right? Yeah. You know, and so uh, like they don't even make that connection. Uh, and when I bring up principles like solidarity and subsidiarity, mm -hmm. you know, words don't mean anything to them because the, our educational system is so uh, you know, like we basically use the, the, our students may understand the terms liberal and conservative, mm -hmm. but they really don't use them in the terms the rest of the world uses those terms in, you know, in terms of. Uh, yes, like, yes, I would say that is common also in the in the Nordic countries, like Sweden, Denmark, Norway, uh, that okay. you don't. Really Interesting, talk, yeah. Yeah, it, it is, it is. But we, we do have a multi-party system, so there are mm -hmm. small Christian Democratic parties uh, gaining a few seats, at least, in the government. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's one of the things that, you know, as a third party in the United States, you're generally starting off running as uh, an influencer or an educational campaign. You're kind of trying to get people to see a viewpoint that they're not going to see from the media. They're not going to see from the main two parties. Mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, unfortunately, that kind of is where you're relegated. You're stuck in this kind of world of, of just trying to get your voice out there uh, when no one's really listening. But we have the advantage of having kind of, I mean, in the, the, the Christian Democratic parties around the world are very successful because there's lots of people who want a social economy, mm -hmm. but also are fairly moderate to conservative in their, their social viewpoints relative to whatever the rest of the, the culture is. Um, and so right now in the United States, that population of people, uh, it just, they sway, that's like the swing vote, essentially. Mm -hmm or whichever candidate can capture the imagination of that group, which they don't necessarily uh, philosophically or politically agree with, but at least that they can get their interest enough, that that's what swings the election. Uh, I saw data that said that uh, Donald Trump in 2016, you know, loosely I would say the Christian Democratic vote, he won that vote three to one mm -hmm. over Clinton. People were so shocked that he won the election, but that, that's a huge population that is politically homeless in the United States. Yes, but what would you say if someone says that it's a, it's a waste of vote to vote for yes. a third party? What, what, what would you say then? Yeah, and, and I think that's, uh, it has been true. And so the biggest two parties, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Libertarians and the Greens uh, mm -hmm. in the United States, but like, uh, you know, in terms of the electorate, the Libertarians have been the third party for a long time, um, but they don't reflect any Christian democratic principles. It's mm -hmm. a very, I mean, it's like the purely liberal party, right? The freedom of economy and freedom of like in social concerns. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, it's every man for himself as a, it's like the opposite of solidarity, right? So it's, it, they, they don't really have, there's, there's some people that follow that. There's a very small percentage, maybe three to 4% of people generally fall in that worldview. But typically anyone that's in a strong family, 
you know, uh, who believes in strong community and, and uh, belongs to a church even, like is going to understand that that's not how any adult operates, you know, that no, no, free no, no. individual, you yes. know. But do you and think so, that there would be a difference? Um, will the system change in America for some time, do you think? Because there are these movements like free and, and fair elections and, and other... Right. I think we can be that, I mean, I, I, I dream big, right? I feel like, uh, you know, well, I, I, I always bring, ask the party members to be visionaries instead of dreamers. You know, we have a lot of people that, that have great ideas and they, they dream like, oh, what if we could do that? And I want to challenge them, well, let's do it then. Let, let's make it happen, right? Yeah. And uh, we have the ability, as opposed to the libertarians have been trying to do it since the 1970s. And they haven't been successful in gaining more than a seat here or there. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll generally do is they'll sneak into a Republican seat. So uh, uh, the Pauls, the Rand Paul and Ron Paul essentially are libertarians, but they've won their, their uh, seats as Republicans, right? Mm. Um, and I think that the reason for that is that, like I said, the electorate doesn't fall in that space. But in our space, there's a huge chunk of the electorate that would vote for, if, if we had the money and the influence and we had a plurality system, you know, like in the rest of the world, a yeah, multi basically. system, I think Brian Carroll would have millions of votes, right? Because yes. votes would come towards something and have the possibility. And really, I feel like there could be three effective parties like there are in the UK that, mm -hmm. that would have to then build coalitions because of the people who naturally fall in our space. Mm. But the concepts that you mentioned, like solidarity, subsidiarity, and uh, also stewardship, what would they mean for America? What would it, what difference would they make? You know what? It doesn't mean anything right now because people, like the educational process is such a key thing at the beginning, right? But when we bring up subsidiarity, uh, people, the libertarians will try to steal the idea because they're all about no or small government, right? As opposed to the appropriate usage of government at different levels. Like they, that, they, they always want to shoot for small and they don't want to shoot for that kind of... Um, necessary right so we always say that government is as small as possible but as big as necessary uh for the purposes of justice uh, and, and in the libertarian mindset which is generally the only third party con conceptualization is that they feel justice means that the government just stays out of your business right but it, it just at this stage and, and it's like co coronavirus you know covid is a perfect example of where you need to have some authority uh can guide a global economy and a global village, you can't have people do whatever they want. And that's why the United States lags behind the rest of the world in a lot of our kind of health concerns with respect to COVID. Mm. Yes, yeah. and also with, with, the, with the pandemic, it's been evident that people do care about each other with the solidarity thought. They do right. help elderly, they do go shopping and whatever that's needed for people that cannot be in the society because they are, uh, more at risk for the virus. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and I think that more than anything, uh, I think people do get, right? And there's still, we haven't been atomized completely to not care for each other. Uh, I think the one thing that, uh, especially as a Christian Democratic Party, for, and for, for any uh, believers, is that uh, we're getting to the point where, in my opinion, that, that being a Christian, being a Muslim or uh, a Jew or whatever, that's practicing, that's very serious about their faith, that it, the secularization of the world uh, kind of blocks us from living that out heroically, right? The solidarity to me isn't just like saying that, oh yeah, I'm kind of with you. It's more of this, I will carry my cross with you, right? And so that, that sense of suffering that is necessary for the, strong, the strength of relationships, I, I think that's what we're lacking, is that we, we get to the surface level of relationships and we see a lot of people saying, oh yeah, I'll go that far with you, mm -hmm. but don't go any farther, you know? And I think that's, to me, solidarity means more than that. It's that I'll go all the way with you. Yeah, yes. That's, that's the, that's that's the, the Aristotelian third kind of friendship, the deep yeah. friendship. And that's right. that, is, that is necessary for the basis for any society actually to, to thrive, I think. Absolutely. And I think that's the educational process. And I think the culture, and at least in the United States, is it teaches us to go the other way, mm. right? It teaches us to, well, go as far as you can for yourself first. And then if you have time left and, you know, you're not tired, then see what your neighbor needs, you know? Mm. <laughs> and I think that's, 
we're, we're encultured that way, we're trained that way. And so, you know, that's a purpose of our party as well, is to call that out uh, on the main two parties that don't follow through with their common good language. In, in let's say, like a local government or smaller, uh, nearer governments that you have, I mean, not the presidential yeah, seat, sure. do, are you represented anywhere? In so I think because we started in 2016 with mm -hmm. this civilization trying to build a movement. Um, and so one of the problems in our local, I mean, the first of all, is like getting enough people together because in a local race, you really need ground soldiers. So right? you need, you know, uh, yeah. social media doesn't really help you in a, in a local government. You've got to have people that will go door to door uh, because then that, that extra 100 or 200 or 300 votes is going to make a difference in that local election. Whereas in the, in, in the national election, on a shoestring budget, you know, we're going to get yeah. thousands and thousands of votes. You're not going to get that unless you have a lot of volunteers. And so we're still not at that, that ma um, membership point, right, to get local. And, but you still need money at the local level. And mm -hmm. you probably have more money at the local level because that, that extra 50 votes is going to cost you $1,000, right, to get oh, yeah. work out them and all that kind of stuff um, <clears throat> but I'm thinking we more than anybody like the like the libertarians and and the uh, green parties uh, don't have many local candidates either even though they've been around for a while because at the local level I think those those Christian democratic principles are even more tangible right mm -hmm. that charity aspect is so much more clear when you're physically talking about a neighbor that lives next door to you uh, uh, down the street, you know, around the corner, um, you know, when you're talking at the national level, your neighbor means someone in the next state, right? It could yes. be the person in, in a different region of the country. Uh, so I think as we grow, those will be opportunities as our membership becomes more knowledgeable themselves. Mm -hmm. And then as the country gets to understand, I mean, I think the biggest problem is they just don't understand why is everything getting so bad? People like want to point fingers mm -hmm. at unrealistic things where it's we just don't care about each other anymore, right? And the culture no, is us. That's fast. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I'm I'm really happy that you did answer my call to to talk about this today, and yeah. I really wish you all the best of luck. I know that you're going somewhere right now, and uh, I just wish you a lot of votes and a lot of foot soldiers. So yeah, let's thank keep you. In thank touch. you. I appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah. So I mean, like I would say that one of the things is great that that you uh, were able to connect, and and, and I apologize for not getting back sooner, but the fact that we've been trying to make inroads or connections with uh, you know, Christian Democratic Christian Democratic parties around the world. Mm -hmm. So I'm we have this connection. Now, how are you um, connected with like uh, the folks in Germany or in uh, the Netherlands or any other place? Yeah, well, yeah. I did actually meet with the Conrad Adenauer uh, Foundation just the other okay. week. And uh, oh, we talked good. about um, perhaps if they are coming to Sweden, I would meet with them or I would go to, to Germany and, and meet with them because I'm working with the Christian uh, democratic ideology in Sweden and trying to have a sort of revival for it. So oh, very good. That's, yeah. that's my mission. And okay. as long as I can spread it, I have a, a, a global mission in mind. Yeah, well, I'm but, excited. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And well, if you, ever, if you ever have a Zoom call that mm -hmm. is across several countries, you know, we would love to represent the United States and, and, and have that and join in on that global mission. Definitely. We'll do okay. that. Okay. okay, great. Thanks. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Talk Good to you, Bye. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.